Well, I'm, a, I'm having a holiday. Yeah. Dan's working a little harder. <laughs> the jewel in the jungle. The Camel Trophy's 10th anniversary lures teams from 14 nations to the Amazon Basin to struggle 1,300 miles through an event that celebrates man's sense of adventure. Camel Trophy is one of the toughest off-road events that the world has ever seen. That's been repeatedly done over many locations and extreme conditions. In 1989, there were over 1 million people that applied to compete in Camel Trophy throughout all the countries that would send delegates to Camel Trophy. Representing the United Kingdom was Bob Ives and his brother Joe. And this is pretty unique because if you get picked to compete in Camel Trophy, you never get to do it again. You only get to do it one time in your lifetime. So just competing and getting selected, earning that spot is huge. But let's take it one step further. Bob and Joe actually won the Camel Trophy as well. So 574 people at the time of making this video have been to space. 36 people have won Camel Trophy. You're almost 16 times more likely to have gone to space than compete and win in the Camel Trophy. Bob and his brother Joe are those people. This year, Bob and his son Dan agreed to fly out to the United States and help us out with getting ready for a big event in Arizona. And so they flew in and right away when they flew in, we put them to work in the shop trying to get things together, uh, getting the trucks ready to go head out to the, uh, head up to Arizona. Bronco was going on a trailer. Our GX470 is gonna be driven by Bob and his son. Yeah, the smell of money. Yeah, maybe in this country. <laughs> One dairy farmer I know calls it the smell. He always says it's the smell of money. Uh, truck, it's an 85. That is a factory. CFI 2, that's an 85. Oh, I know what he's doing. He's gold mining. It's definitely not a road trip with a trailer unless Metal Tech blows at least one if not two trailer tires on the trip. Yeah, I don't follow... want to be here when it blows. No, just be following behind when the, all the tread just come off a tire and uh, yeah, yeah, hit the front of this it. car a bit. So the outer tread of the tire just decided to just leave the tire at 70 miles an hour. So uh, it didn't blow yet, so we aired some of the air down on it. We're going to pull the tire off, swap it out. We carry two spares, so we're good right now. So we dropped down off the mountains, finally landing in Moab, our destination for the night. The first stop is at the Point S tire to get the trailer tires replaced. And the guys at Point S and Moab did a great job for us. Next, we go hit the hotel, check in, drop our bags, and we drop the ramps on the trailer and get the truck off the trailer. And we're gonna head out to Moab Rim Trail. Moab Rim Trail is an awesome trail just right out of downtown Moab. And as you're heading out of Moab, heading south, right before the McDonald's, you hang a right, that very first road. I can't even tell you the name of the road, but it's that first right. And you just stay left and you come along the Colorado River and just drive down that and then you'll see the sign for the Moab Rim Trailhead. And it's just an absolutely beautiful, epic trail. Yeah, yeah it was in uh, following old gold mining trails in the Amazon. It was uh, 
uh, they kind of wreck it in the dry season and the, for camel trophy they always want to go back in the wet season when it's most difficult. When we did it, it was the 14 teams, there's four or five support vehicles, so it's about 20 old Land Rovers and uh, and they just kind of, it's, it's, there's a few little competitive elements, but the majority of the two weeks in, out there is doing a thousand miles is like just helping everybody else working together, building the bridges that are washed away. And they reckon it was kind of the toughest one. And at times we actually had to have local guys, their tractors pulling us through. It just became, it's meant to happen in two weeks. They kind of wreck it a thousand miles. And they, with the competitive elements, they plan for it to take about two weeks, but it's, we were getting really well behind schedule, getting really bogged in. And some days we did, oh, like, you know, a mile or something of winching every car through a piece after we built a bridge and it just became a real mud bath kind yeah. of slog yeah so it's like yeah it's a real it is a bit of a marathon job but it's you know you're only gonna do it once you only get one chance at it you can never do it again uh competitively um so put everything into it and kind of you can sleep on the plane home kind of thing so i think uh, a lot of people they pass their different country selections and were, were, they were new to driving Land Rovers. They'd had a lot of practice in, in their own country, and but I mean, we'd grown up on the farm. You kind of knew what mud looked like. You kind of knew how to follow a, a good track. When you came to the, the main road that we were on, I call it a road. It was just a mud track. But when it went straight ahead, you could see where the locals had perhaps been had cut away through the trees or in the outside, which other people weren't necessarily spotting. But because you kind of, I don't know, you grew up on the farm and you kind of look away, you you, you kind of root pick. To the left, up over this. Go, 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 go. You kind of see where people have been and you kind of just notice those little wheel tracks going off and you think, oh yeah. So you kind of just drive around them and you come out in front of the mud hole and everybody else is kind of bogged in the mud hole. So, you know, we did that a few times as well, you know, get around the outside and then pull people through the mud. And, I mean, the mud was pretty relentless at times, just winching endlessly, like winching from one car or one tree to the next tree. And But I mean, the big river crossings we did as well, we had we had a couple of uh, rib boats, you know, inflatable boats with us. With, with aluminium ladders on them, and then we just put the two boats together, time together, put the ladders on top, drive a car on it, get the 26 cars across the river, you know, get them off, pack up the boats, put them back in the car again, and carry on. So it's, it was, we kind of, the whole management and the whole t thing was, you know, became pretty unstoppable, really. You know, it might take a long time, but it was, we were kind of covering every uh, obstacle we could find, really. So, yeah, automatic gearbox, I've put it down into, into the lowest possible gear, and we're just going to crawl up nice and steady. Hey Mark, are you guys leaving yet? It's the first little step obstacle in front of us, just a little, little step to climb up. He's following the track. So our GX470, it's an 05 GX470. It's built for overlanding. It's not built for rock crawling. Uh, we don't have lockers in this thing, um, running 34-inch 34, 34 tires on it. And it's built for overlanding. It's meant for long-distance hauling across vast areas, not really crossing Moab epic slick rock. But in this point, we got it to a point where we kind of bit off a little more than we could chew. Having a holiday. Yeah. Dan's working a little harder. <laughs> I'm just glad you got. I'm glad you brought Dan with you. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> you got your highway guy He's building a road. Yep. 
Hey. Uh, we're playing uh, Climb the Ledge with the GX470. And uh, we may have bit off a little more than the 34s can chew. Also, we would have normally just pulled cable and uh, winched the truck up over the ledge. But uh, we're just trying to keep everything as clean as we could. It was time to go ahead and let the Bronco take a shot at it. You said go on, Dan. Yeah, you did. Go on. Go, 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 go. Come on. Dig that hole. Dig that hole. You're plowing. You're right. You are definitely a farmer. You just plowed that rock. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should have checked it a bit earlier first, I guess, the, tra the trail. Seen how difficult it was, but it's, uh, it's pretty impressive to even climb this for the front end. But yeah, we kind of need a few more rocks thrown in these big holes and maybe a, some extra lockers in the axles, but it'd uh, be good to see what the Bronco does. That's it, straight back like that. Mark's just going to get out of the way. Yeah, about there. A little tiny bit left to start with. Yeah, there. Now a bit right. No trust. No, left a bit, left a bit. Cool, go straight now. Go give it something. It's got 37 stuff, I guess. Yeah, 37. Lockers, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Bronco kind of yeah. did it one and done. After a great day out on the trail, testing the Bronco, seeing how our new front bumper mounting system, the sliders, the rear bumper, checking approach angles, departure angles, performance on the rocks, just exceeded our expectations and performance. <laughs> uh, you go turn right, turn right, turn right, turn right, two rights back into town and it's just time to get something to eat and you got to go to the broken ore it's a good wrap up for a great day with good friends and trucks on the trail oh, oh sorry Danny, wrong one. <laughs> same as a friggin jeep we keep doing that same as a disco where they got them like that well they these are both wagons but that's totally different you got twice the size yeah i think yours is just twice as mine they've got to get this to fat out the middle and yeah i have no idea <laughs> Yeah, it's welcome to the